today we met um, a patient with a stroke and then we wanted to distinguish between um, upper motor neural lesions and then lower motor neural lesions. Why um, the patient with um, a stroke who has an upper motor neural lesion would have a preserved contraction of the frontalis muscle can wrinkle the forehead but the lower motor neural lesion guy cannot. So um, I've just drawn I mean, a schematic diagram of how the central nervous system looks like if one cuts uh, or cuts I wanted to say the central nervous system uh, in the coronal section so you have the brain the two cerebral hemispheres so this is the right um, cerebrum and then this is the left cerebrum as it were then this is the brain stem so you have the mid brain okay the pons ps and then the medulla then of course this is the spinal cord okay so we said that from the motor homunculus you have the various parts of the body i mean represented on the brain so this is the leg this is where the trunk is the hand when i say the leg i mean the lower limb so the lower limb the thigh the trunk the hand we have the face we have the mouth and all that so the tongue and then those things okay so the same thing can be said for the left side so i'm saying that as you know the simplest um cell in the nervous system is actually the neuron okay so this is an example of um, a motor neuron if you will so but then it comes out like that so if you divided the the nervous system into uh, i mean the simplest part you can think of this is the cell you are likely to find that's what i'm saying so these cells some of them come from high up above from the cerebral cortex and they would have to meet their counterparts there so the cells which comes out of the cerebral cortex from high up are the upper motor neurons then we have the lower motor neurons right so these neurons come out like this in fibers so a lot of them like that okay so this this funnel this funnel pattern is what is called the corona radiata so from the central the cerebral cortex comes out of the corona radiata and then they meet as a single bundle in the internal capsule which is located somewhere in this region that's what i'm saying you see that so now i'm going to clean the corona radiator because it's going to make our diagram messy i'm going to clean that and then represent each body region with just a single fiber okay so i'm going to use the blue the blue ink so we have something like this something like that something like this something like that so i like i said do all come through the internal capsule. Now, when they when they are coming, they have to come and meet their fellow their counterparts. Okay, so for example, I give an example that the the fibers which supply the extraocular muscles of the eyes, most of them, like the lateral rectus, sorry, the medial rectus, the superior oblique, and all that, the inferior oblique, I wanted to say, they would meet the oculomotor nerve nucleus, right, in the midbrain. So you have the right oculomotor nerve nucleus the left oculomotor nerve nucleus so it will just synapse on it i don't know why this now work right in my it is just going to synapse on it let's say it's from the it's from this region so it will just synapse on it and it will meet its lower motor neuron then it will come out go and supply what the extra of the eye but that's not what we are interested in we are interested in the facial nerve right so the facial nerve the nucleus of the facial nerve is actually at the junction between the pons and the medulla. So, but unlike the oculomotor nerve nucleus, which has one nucleus on the right and one nucleus on the left, the facial nerve nucleus actually, or the nuclei are actually four. You see that? So, when I see the nuclei are actually four, this is the cell body of the lower motor neuron. So, it's going to come out like this, isn't it? Right, so the upper nuclei, sometimes called the the ventral nuclei, okay, they are going to supply the muscles of the face. So if I drew someone's face like this, you see, this is where the forehead is, isn't it? So the frontalis muscle is here, and then the, we have the muscles of the eye, the obicularis oculi. So the obicularis oculi. So these nuclei are going to feed these muscles 
and then these nuclei the lower ones they are going to feed the muscles in this region so like the zygomaticus the vaccinator muscle the orbicularis uh, oris and all that that is why the patient's mouth will be deviated mm -hmm. because it's paralyzed do you understand good now having understood this want to focus on the facial nerve first okay so now let's uh, elaborate on the facial nerve nucleus what i was saying was that now i'm going to expand the pons very big and i'm going to make it very big because that is our focus and this is the medulla and the like that so we have one two three four this guy on the right is going to feed on my right this part my forehead and this guy on the right i mean on my right the forehead and then the eye isn't it and this guy lower will feed this part this guy is on the left he'll feed this part and then this part and this guy will feed that part so before they even do their feeding, they need to get an input from above, from the upper motor neurons. So I'm saying that when the facial nerve neuron is coming, I mean there are two, there are two sides of the brain. So let's say from the right, this guy is coming. When it gets here, what does it do? That, that, that was where the confusion is. So it synapses on the upper, upper nucleus on the right. That is, that is what it does first. Okay, mm -hmm. then for the contralateral uh, supply, which is a black ink, it gives another supply to this guy. So it means that the one on the right feeds both upper nuclei. Mm -hmm. And in addition, it gives a branch to this guy. And I'm going to represent that with broken lines. So we have this coming this way. understand that so whatever happens on the right also happens on the left so what do you think happens so on the left too you have the facial nerve upper motor neurons coming as a bundle mm -hmm. comes and then what does it do first it, it feeds its comrade first right and just like the right did right bats left left bats right so feeds the, this one here and then gives what Do you see that? So if you, if you can learn how to draw this, then you will understand things very well. So I'm saying that if someone has an upper motor neuron facial nerve palsy, like the patient has a stroke, which has cut off, and this is the upper motor, when we say upper motor neuron issue, it means that this guy has been cut off. When we say lower motor neuron issue of the facial nerve, it means that these guys have been cut off. That is all. So there are also neurons which are also going out, isn't it? then they are going to feed the muscles of the face so i'm saying that this one will feed the upper facial muscles the upper facial muscles what do i mean by this the muscles of the forehead and then the muscles of the what which close the eye mm -hmm. do you see that yes. then this one is going to the lower lower facial muscles lower facial muscles what do I mean? The muscles of the cheeks, the muscles of the lips, like that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I want. You see it. So if you have, let's say someone has got a stroke, a right, a right intracerebral hemorrhage, and it's affected, it's affected the this guy. What do you think happens? What happens is that who loses the supply? Let's let's do it together. This guy loses the supply. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. If who loses the supply? Uh, this guy he loses the supply from him but of, but fortunately for him he gets the supply from this guy so he's he, he's on pressure you see that yeah. now let's go and ask this guy does he lose the supply no if this guy is the problem that's not the supply because he gets the supply from this guy which means that on the right side the patient will be able to what wrinkle the forehead the patient will be able to wrinkle forehead that's one of the upper facial muscles we'll be able to close the eye mm -hmm. that is the job of this guy how about this guy he's still intact so the patient will be able to what 
deviate the mouth. When he's smiling, this place is very strong. So there is, so in total, there is no facial palsy on the left, on the right, sorry. No. Now let's come to the left. What happens? This guy does not lose his function. Because although this guy has been truncated, he is still receiving supply from this guy. So the patient to be able to what, wrinkle the forehead, the patient will still be able to close the eyes. So we have done one, two, three. Now let's go to this guy. This guy unfortunately receives his supply from that guy. So his job is what? Gone. That is why in a patient with upper motor neuron lesion, the lesion is here. Right? That's the patient is and his, his mouth is deviated. He thinks that this part is very weak. I asked him to rank you, he's able to do that. So that's one way to what? differentiate an upper motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve from a lower motor neuron. Now let's look at a lesion that affects the lower motor neuron lesion. Or the lower motor neurons. Is that clear? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now the lesion is not here. So let's see that the lower motor neuron lesion is now the problem. So, for instance, someone has Bell's palsy. So let's assume that these guys, Bell's palsy of the what? Of the left. So these guys are gone. You don't just say this motor neuron is gone. No. They are, they are lower motor neurons, two of them. So if the, the left is going, Two of them are going. If the right is going, two of them are going. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a lesion of these guys, it doesn't matter what the supply is, is doing. They will still not run. I'll give you the baton, you're not running. Do you get it? So it means that the patient will not be so on the on the on the on the on the on the left side. So you see that here the lesion is here. Remember that here, the other one, the lesion was here. So on the left side, or let me begin with the right. On the right side, these guys are not affected. So the patient will be able to what? Wrinkle the forehead and everything. On the left, the patient is not able to wrinkle. He's not able to smile. Nothing. Yeah. That is why lower motor neuron lesions, everybody is paralyzed. But upper motor neuron lesions, someone is what? Preserved. Do you understand? Yes. Now, let's follow it up. Let's follow the conversation up to just explain the cross hemiplegia and the non cross hemiplegia. Okay. Now, remember that this facial nerve bundle was actually part of a bundle coming down. So it means that those who are going to supply the limbs, their partners are not here. So they have to move down to the spinal cord. Do you see that? Because the principle says that if you get somewhere in the journey and then your partner is in a certain part, give the baton and let the partner move. But how is it possible that a nerve is going to supply the limb and then it is snapping the midbrain or the brain stem? So it has to move into that's why the spinal cord has also got what? anterior horn cells isn't it mm -hmm. good so polymyelitis affects anterior horn cells isn't it? good so these the 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 muscles or the fibers going to supply the extraocular muscles they have already given their fibers the trochlear nerve actually gave its fibers in the forms because it's also, it's also going to supply the trochlear nerve is what uh, superior oblique isn't it yeah, have you forgotten L <laughs> lr6 so four. So the lateral rectus is supplied by the abducent nerve, and then the superior oblique is supplied by the trochlear nerve. They've all given their, you see it. Mm -hmm. So now those which are going to supply the lens, why are they going to send up? They are going to send up on the spinal cord. Those which are going to supply the hands will send up on the upper part of the spinal cord. Those which are going to supply the lower lower limbs will have to go deep, 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 deep. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the or the concept is that what is it? The concept is that for the motor fibers. There is a concept called the great decassation, mm -hmm. where anybody who crosses the medulla should decassate. So it means that the, 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 the decassation does not affect the ocular motor, does not affect the facial nerve, because they, their batons were or the, their baton receivers were up up there. So when the rest of the fibers are coming, okay, the rest of the fibers which didn't miss there, about ninety percent of them will decassate. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. So this one on the left was what? The cassette. That is why it is said that for the for the hand and then the legs, the right, the left brain controls the left part. It is so simple because 
of this great degradation. Do you see that? Yeah. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Now, I spoke about the concepts of crossed and uncrossed hemi hemiplegia. Crossed hemiplegia and an uncrossed hemiplegia.